Hey everyone, welcome to Apogee Up Close. My name is Irfan Baki. I'm a customer engineer with Google Cloud, helping our customers make better architectural decisions as well as better API management decisions. And today we'll be talking about insights driven API programs. And the objective is just to share our philosophy on analytics and monitoring and relate it to your business, right? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a lot of examples of how our customers are leveraging uh, insights to make their businesses better, to make the API programs better. And then toward the end, I'll take you through a demo that will showcase everything that we talk about in the presentation. But the central idea really is that a business needs real-time insights on multiple different levels to be agile. And uh, I'll show you today on how you can get those insights. So let's dive right into it, right? Um, I'm sure you're familiar with Apogee. Um, it sits in the middle of all of your services in your applications and all of the data that goes through between your applications um, and your services, it goes through Apogee. And the good thing about this is that Apogee has a lot of data passing through and it can tell you, it can give you the right insights on how your services are doing, both on a business level as well as on an operational level. And when we are talking about this data, right, one thing to keep in mind is that the data is usually associated with a particular entity. So on the left, you have the customer. On the right, you have your backend systems. And that's how the data flows, uh, left to right and right to left. And it is associated with a customer, an application, and a developer. And it accesses particular APIs, um, which are part of different products of yours. And in turn, it, those APIs in Apogee, then they um, interact with specific backend systems. Right? So all of these insights are very specific to the particular entity. Thus, they can give you a good glean on how your business and your API program is doing. So now let me tell you about uh, our philosophy behind insights. We look at insights in a lot of different levels. And the first level is just your core business, right? Everything starts at your core business KPIs. What is your business strategy? and what are the metrics that you need to track to achieve it. And you would want to track that. Um, and you can do it in Apogee in a cl very close to real time basis, uh, be it your revenue or your subscriptions or the health of your marketing campaigns. You can track all of those insights in Apogee. The second one is the insights about your API program, right? How is your API program doing? How many developers are signing up in a particular week? The different applications the developers are making, how are they consuming your APIs? What are the experiences that the end users are getting? So all of those insights you can get from a good API management platform like Apogee. The next one is at a product level. Right, so within your API program, you would be exposing a lot of different APIs bundled together as a product that represent a cohesive functionality. And you want to see how those products are being consumed by your customers. And you want to see how one product relates to the other and figure out how you can make them better, invest the right resources to make them better. And lastly, the operational level analytics for your operations teams, and these have to be real time. So if there's something wrong in your APIs on Apogee or even in your backend systems, you want to get alerted in real time with the right amount of information that will help you solve that particular error. And you'd be able to get that with Apogee. So now let me talk about some of our customers that are using Apogee Analytics on all of these different levels. So one of the customers I want to talk about is T-Mobile. T-Mobile is um, one of the largest telecommunications providers in the United States, and they are reinventing themselves as a technology company. They are modernizing the entire stack, and they're using Apogee as the API layer on top of everything to um, manage the APIs and govern them and all of that. So uh, one of their key business metrics that they track are subscriptions. Right, and they're able to get business insights into how the API program is supporting that key business strategy and how many subscriptions they're driving. So thinking about T-Mobile, it has a good online presence. It also has a very good brick and mortar concrete offline presence, right? 
Uh, it has thousands of stores across the U.S., but at the same time, they're also selling through big, big box retailers. And they would want to find out what kinds of demographics resonate better in one channel versus the other, right? The people who would buy uh, T-Mobile subscriptions in the retailer Target may be of a different demographic than folks that buy the subscriptions at Best Buy or Walmart, right? And you want to make sure that you are appealing to them, you're providing the right kind of product to each one of them, and that's possible by gaining the right insights from that demographic. The other customer I want to talk about is Domino's Pizza. Now, you would think that Domino's is in the pizza delivery business, but actually they are in a B2B business, servicing their franchise owners. And these franchisees, they have, um, they have their own uh, IT systems, usually. And then Domino's needs a way to integrate into their delivery systems and their payment systems and all of that. And they're able to do that with Apogee. But at the same time, to stay competitive and uh, lure the, the franchise owners in staying with Domino's and opening up even more franchises, they need to provide them with relevant insights on how they can make their programs better. And with a platform like Apogee, as all of the data is flowing through, they would be able to give them insights on how, what, it, what does the best delivery experience look like, right? Uh, who are the target demographics? What are they interested in uh, across different geographies? And what are the success factors and success criteria that the franchise owners can implement to make their businesses better? The other customer I want to talk to you about is Walgreens. And Walgreens is really a classic example of a customer that has developed a robust developer ecosystem. Walgreens, if you're aware, it is one of the largest pharmacy chains in the United States. And um, back in 2008, they started to experience a drop in their photo business because folks weren't using film rolls anymore and they were using their smartphones instead to take pictures. And then it was really important for them to understand the end user behaviors and figure out how to get those users back. Well, they found out that they were taking pictures with their smartphones, but they still wanted to get those pictures printed. So they created some native applications, mobile as well as desktop, to get to, to basically enable them to get those photos printed at a nearby Walgreens. And that restored some of their business, but they said, hey, I think there is some more potential here. And they started to get insights into what kinds of pictures were these customers printing. And they found out that a lot of this traffic was coming from other photo services that would enhance uh, the customer's photos. For example, at Halloween time, you would upload a picture to one of these services and decorate it with pumpkins or something, right? So they were experiencing a lot of traffic from such services. They said, all right, how about I expose my API, my photo prints API to these different applications and services and incentivize them to um, route the traffic to get the photos printed at a nearby Walgreens store. So they did that and their ecosystem exploded, right? There were actually net new apps that the developers were making just to tap into the incentives that Walgreens would give them um, to, to direct traffic to their stores. So that was very successful. And then they replicated that model uh, to other products as well. So now they have a plethora of products ranging from prescription refills and rewards programs and home delivery services that are basically just APIs that they're exposing and they're being integrated in the developer's applications and thereby um, giving more business and traffic to Walgreens. And they were able to do so by really understanding their end customers and their shopping patterns, as well as understanding developers what they need and incentivizing them to, um, to, to partner with them and send them the right traffic.
The next thing I want to talk about is operational insights and monitoring. And this is actually used by a lot of our customers in a lot of different verticals. So I won't give you a particular customer's example, but um, let me let me tell you about the motivation actually of why we um, why we created the monitoring module in Apogee. So um, some of the largest retailers in the U.S. and across the globe actually are Apogee's customers. And at critical times of the year, like the New Year sale or the Black Friday or Cyber Monday sale, they experience enormous amount of traffic, right? So for example, in 2018, um, Black Friday, um, we experienced um, close to 110,000 transactions per second sustained over long durations of time. And it's important that these services for these customers, they're up and running without any disruption because every second of disruption could cost them hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in revenue, right? Um, so Apogee um, has a really robust API availability rate. Um, we surpass our SLAs, but our customers said that, hey, sometimes there are things on our end um, that we need to troubleshoot. Some, some of our services get down um, for a variety of different reasons. And we would love to get some alerts for us to be able to fix those issues fast and get, get up and running really fast. So that was the motivation behind Apogee Monitoring. It addresses a particular need for the operations teams, right? Um, there's a lot of pressure these days for them to resolve issues very fast, quickly diagnose issues. And the data that Apogee has, which is uh, specific to the entities accessing the APIs, as well as services that the API is tied to, in the different policies in your, in your proxies and where exactly that error might be occurring, is very useful in diagnosing these API issues. So this is a diagram of how Apogee monitoring differs from just generic synthetic monitoring. Um, the, the thing I want you to focus on is that the alerts that you get, um, they are precise. They tell you exactly where the error has occurred. They're contextual. Um, if the error is due to a race condition, right? If it's intermittent, it'll help you zero in on what exactly is wrong uh, and what is triggering that particular error. So just to sum it up, Apogee Analytics um, actually covers all of the personas that need insights into the API program to make it better, right? It is your business owner to get insights on the strategy of your API program um, and how it's doing with relation to the different KPIs that the business team has set. So the API team to monitor the health of the API program and figure out what is gaining traction, what needs more resources. Uh, to the app developer to gain insights into particular API proxies and applications. And um, to your ops teams to get real-time monitoring alerts and uh, help in diagnosing the issues. So at this, um, let me jump right into a demo. So this is how the Apogee platform looks, right? You have a place to design your APIs, you have a place to create, build your APIs, productize them, publish them, and all of that. And then you have a place for analytics. And to the left of the screen, as you can see, these are the out-of-the-box dashboards that you have to target specific personas within your organization. Um, I would like to begin with um, developers because once you have an API program, usually the first thing you think about is how are my developers consuming my APIs? What is my engagement rate and all of that? So this dashboard will give us just that. So right now, as you can see, um, there is a funnel on the screen and you'll be able to see how many developers have signed up for your API program. And out of the developers that have signed up, how many have actually created applications? How many of those applications are active and how many of those applications are highly active, right? And down below, you'll be able to see how is each of the application performing? What is the traffic that they are 
running through the platform, what is the error rate and all of that. And then you can dig in further to analyze the high level metrics. The next thing that you would be interested in just at a high level is the traffic composition, right? Just tell me what are the top 10 proxies that are receiving the most traffic. Tell me what are the top applications that are consuming my services. What are the top 10 products that are uh, being accessed, being consumed, and who are the developers that are the most active on my platform, right? So that is more a high level overview of the health of your API program. If you're looking at the end users, if you're a product manager, you would want to gauge where are my end users located, right? Um, you'll be able to do that with the GeoMap attribute with, uh, with Apigee. Over here, as you can see, I have a lot of users coming from the United States, but I also have presence, global presence, um, in Australia, Norway, and China, Pakistan, a lot of places. So if I click on the US, I'll be able to see the different states where traffic's coming from. Most of it looks like it's coming from California. I can dig in deeper and see what are different counties that are sending me this traffic. You can also see what are the devices that are um, accessing your, your applications. So over here, you can see that the most popular platform looks like it's Chrome and then Internet Explorer and so on and so forth. Most of the traffic is coming from the PC and uh, a lot of my users are also using the smartphone, mostly from, from Windows, also from iOS and all of that. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is um, the API metrics on a product level as well as on an API proxy level. Right, so if I click on API proxy performance, on this dashboard, you'll be able to see what is the health of all of my API proxies. Uh, for the traffic that you've gotten, what are the successes and what are the errors, right? You can see that, oh, my error rate is, is pretty high, actually, it's 8%. So just, I need to make a mental note that I need to dig in to why, what is causing that error rate. So we'll do that in just a second. You can also see that my average response time for the proxy is just a bit over 100 milliseconds. For the target, it's a bit over 250 milliseconds. These are the traffic patterns by proxy, and there's the average response time for each of the proxies. In the same time, so this is for your proxies that you are exposing on Apigee, right? You can also get um, the same kind of information for your target backends that the, the proxies are in turn hitting to get the right data to execute the right logic. And you can see that the traffic by target tells you what the, what the traffic patterns are. Um, it also tells you that most or all of it is successful, right? Your backend is not throwing any errors, which is good. Uh, your response time, um, average proxy is about 130. Um, average target is um, close to 300. And it also tells you a bit about the payload. You can also do latency analysis and cache performance and all of that. Let me take a look at error code analysis. Let's see what kinds of errors are we throwing. So all of the errors are proxy errors. We knew that. Um, and a majority of those errors are 400 errors, right? 4xx, um, mostly authentication um, and, uh, and bad requests and all of that, which is good. We want to deny those uh, requests. But a small percentage of it is also 500, 5xx errors. Uh, we should look into that, what exactly is going on there. It also tells me what is the error by proxy. And it looks like my product search proxy is receiving or generating the most amount of errors. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Um, errors by target um, and also proxy errors by response code. Most of the response code um, is 401 or 500 and some 502s. So we'll look into that as well. Um, now let's let's dive right into um, some of the business level metrics. So I had mentioned that we have a lot of customers that are using these um, these tools to gain business level insights on their revenues and on their marketing campaigns and all of that. So let me show you how you can do it. So these are what I showed you are out of the box reports. You have a lot of metrics and data available so that you can create your own custom reports. 
So let's say you are a big box retailer and you have a lot of retail locations all across the globe. For that, let's say I want a revenue report on how each one of my locations are doing. So I'll run this report for the past hour as I just want it to be real time just to monitor the health. And it will tell me that, hey, most, um, the, the majority or at the highest revenue grossing store was my US 15 store. And my stores in India, Norway, Pakistan are doing pretty well as well as they are in the top 10, right? Let's say on the other hand, you are running a marketing organization and you want to see the health of your marketing campaigns. Then let's take a look at the marketing report. Let's run it for the past hour. So over here, you can see that your traffic is divided into three different blocks and one chunk is from social media. So let's take a look in there. As you can see, the report is interactive. Um, it tells me that I have a few different campaigns running. One is a data privacy campaign. There's also the money back guarantee campaign, all of that. And it tells me what is a traffic composition from each one of these. And it looks like my expert conversation campaign um, is grossing the least amount of traffic. So I hope that I'm also spending the least amount of money on that. And um, the revenue uh, per dollar spent on that campaign is worth my time, right? Um, so let's click on the data privacy campaign and look, look at what kinds of um, um, channels the, the, the traffic is coming from. It looks like uh, most of it is coming from blogs. There's also f some from Google, LinkedIn, some influencer marketing going on in the least amount of traffic from uh, Twitter and Instagram. So it gives me a good um, insight into what is working for my campaigns versus what is not working. So um, now lastly, what I wanna show you is API monitoring. And API monitoring, um, is about how is the health of your API program in real time. So what you're seeing right now is basically a dashboard. It tells you what is the TPS that your org is experiencing, uh, what is the error rate, what is the latency and all of that. So one feature I wanna call out over here is the alerting feature. So over here, um, I've set a 500 error alert to alert me whenever my proxy surpasses a threshold for the 500 errors. And that threshold I've set is that if there is a constant um, rate of 3% of or higher for five minutes, then please alert me and send me an alert to this particular email. And you can choose whatever mode you want. You can integrate with anything you want with webhook or PagerDuty or Slack or email. So um, if I go to my inbox, I was actually getting some 500 alerts and I got a few alerts um, just recently. So let me take a look at this um, that I got uh, about a day ago and it tells me that uh, there's a playbook for me to use to troubleshoot that alert. It also gives me the details on exactly what the alert is. So let me, let me click on view details. So it'll take me to a report um, in the investigation panel on API monitoring. It tells me that, hey, the status code is 500 and here was a spike that I'm looking at. Um, it was constant or it was, it was pretty stable um, at that threshold for about five minutes and that's how uh, it got triggered is right here, right? It tells me that the rate limit policy that I have is triggering this. So now I have a pretty decent idea of what exactly is going on, right? I click on this, it tells me that the environment is production. This is the proxy. So if you recall from earlier, the product search proxy was also a proxy that was, um, that was throwing the most errors. So I'm not surprised by this. And it looks like a lot of applications are affected by this particular error, right? So that's good to know. And it also gives me some other detail in terms of the message processor and also the target that my API proxy is, um, is calling uh, as part of these API calls. And um, down below, it tells me that most of the errors are generated from the proxy itself. Um, and there are very few from the target. 
So 3,500 from the proxy itself. So now I know exactly where to go, right? I know the particular uh, proxy that's, that is impacted and I know the policy within the proxy that is throwing these errors. So let me now go to develop. Let me click on API proxies. And now I'll go into the product search proxy and I'll go into develop. And this is the policy, the spike RS policy that is throwing those errors. And it looks like I'm saying that, hey, if I receive more than three requests per second, uh, then please um, throw errors. Like don't, don't let, let them pass through because I think that is higher than I expect. I think three requests per second, um, let's say I do some analysis, I look at the capacity on backend systems and I feel like, you know, I, c I could probably increase it to seven requests per second and save it. And now it's deployed. And basically that's it. Now I should expect those error rates to go down because my spike arrest policy will get triggered less often. So this is basically what um, the Apogee analytics and monitoring looks like. So that's it for today. Thank you for joining. You can find more webinars uh, coming out every week. So please tune in for that. And you can also find recordings of our past webinars on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining. Take care. Bye.